What are you doing? Why are you pressing it? Because you were. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Salem Lutheran Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. It is so good to see you all here today on this third Sunday in Advent. This Sunday of joy. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Sunday yeah. where we continue to wait for the Lord, but rather than deep introspection, we do so with rejoicing hey, hey, hey. Days while we wait okay. and prepare. Today hey. is also Salem's Adventacular, so can we yeah, get a round of applause for Salem's choir, our music directors? 
And we have guest musician um, Ken Schuster as well. Yes. Today we continue our series this. Should I wear my Christmas sweater? Beginning worship with a contemplative practice. We have uh, experienced Lectio Divina together, a divine meditative reading of scripture. We have had a particular kind of body and posture and word-centered prayer of, of which, and today we have a centering prayer. A centering prayer is very much like a form of meditation. So we will have a few minutes together where we will sit in silence. And this is the type of prayer and meditation where as you notice thoughts filling your mind or your body, notice them and let them pass over you. Um, one way I think about this sometimes is if you are just laying on a hill and you see the clouds and you notice them, but they continue to move. And they continue on, and then new clouds will come by, but they continue on, and you don't dwell on any one A thought can be a bodily sensation, a sound you're hearing, it can be tasks that come up in your mind, it can be your inner stuff All of those things are just fine and beautiful, but they are not when we are spending our time and our energy this morning. We are spending time in silence and listening. One way that that might be helpful is to pay there attention you to your breath. So as you have those thoughts that come up, turn back to your breath and take a deep breath and notice your breathing. Or maybe it might be helpful to pick a word. A word, something simple like Jesus or joy since we are on Sunday. That then hey, can I did my own like word. a mantra yeah. that you'll say a few times to get ah. into this prayer perspective. But then when those thoughts inevitably come up, go back to that word, say it quietly in your mind, and recenter yourself in silence. So we'll spend just a couple minutes. The typical practice of centering prayer is about 20 minutes, maybe doing it twice a day. So we are not going to do that today. But we'll do a few minutes together. I would guess um, I'm not going, I will set a timer. It's going to be five minutes together, which is a very short centering prayer, but it might feel like a long time. And if anyone is interested in a full explanation and invitation, there is a little guide to centering prayer a la Thomas Keating outside in the narthex on your way out as well. So we'll each pick a sacred word or symbol or our breath as our intention to consent to God's presence with, with us. We'll sit comfortably with our eyes closed, settling briefly and silently. And then we will, I'm setting this up here. And then when we have our thoughts, we'll return to our breath or return to our sacred word. I will start us with a short prayer and then as the prayer period ends with three bells, we will sit in silence, breathe one more time, and I will close us with a very short prayer as well. Let us pray. O Lord, you are here. O Lord, we are here. Amen.
O oh God, grant us undivided hearts to love and serve you today with all of our hearts, minds, strengths, and souls. Open our eyes to see you and serve you in the ordinary events of this day. May love and joy radiate through us. Amen. Well, for some of us that might have been just a wonderful moment, and for some of us, that might have been really hard work, but they call it a contemplative practice for a reason. So if you choose to do this again um, outside of this time, don't feel that you need to try to do it perfectly. It's about spending the time with God and spending the time in silence. Now we will continue our worship with our Advent wreath lighting, singing Wait for the Lord, printed in the bulletin, then a short liturgy with our assisting minister, and Amar, if you want to come up and light the candles as well. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
today will say will carry a majority of the good news here's a little bit of context for the reading this reading comes from towards the end of the book of isaiah and the book of isaiah split into three main parts one is a people who are not living faithfully are not treating especially their poorest folks well and they end up going into the next phase of the book which is one of exile for they have been unfaithful and they have treated their people poorly. And then they are on their way home. And so this might be a word to a people who are returning to their homeland, not sure what it's gonna be like, not sure is it gonna be bad, are we gonna be faithful? What is it gonna look like once and for all? So here is a word that comes from God through Isaiah in the third section of Isaiah. 
with a word of what justice and peace and hope and the kingdom of all of God's people will look like once and for all someday in order to provide hope and encouragement for just today. This is often where we start to think of these um, foretellings of the Messiah of Jesus. So hold that because us Christians read these texts and think, oh, the prophet and God are talking about the coming of Jesus who will bring this reality of justice, of gentle justice and peace to fruition. And hold that, don't let go of that. And imagine what a Jewish people, what the Israelite people must, how they might have heard this text as a promise for today. And maybe, this arriving servant, this one who will bring forth justice to the nations, might not just be an individual, but what if it is the people, God's people in community, bringing these things to fruition for the sake of all people, especially those in most need, and the land itself. So listen, and as you listen, hold that coming Messiah, and hold a good word to community, about community, together. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break. A dimly burning wick he will not quench, but he will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. And the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, and spirit to those who walk in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. If we hold these words as both a promise of a Messiah who once and for all will come in glory for the sake of all people that everyone might find belonging and safety and freedom and grace and love. And we hold that with a promise to a community who is afraid and anticipating, a community who is called and sent to be a light, to be a blessing? How do we hear it as one of those same communities called and blessed in order to bless others? Might we hear it as a word of encouragement and an invitation to faithfulness? Might we hear it as a reframing of our work? Because I don't know if you noticed this, but there is a lot of justice in this text, but it is a gentle justice. A justice that does not come guns blazing power over, a gentle justice that bubbles up. Yes, in the streets, a gentle justice that brings love everywhere it goes, a gentle justice that is all-inclusive, a gentle justice that lasts and we'll have the final word. What might it look like for us while we wait for this Savior to come once and for all 
and bring all things into him, to bring all things into love and unity, what might it look like for us to embody this gentle justice? To embody this gentle justice in our gathering as a community, to embody gentle justice as public citizens, to embody just gentle justice in our words and the songs we choose to sing. This gentle justice is the already and not yet gift of this season of Advent. It has been gifted to us and to others to share and to spread as it takes hold and grows. But this gentle justice, once and for all, will come. And we are tasked with waiting and working and praying in that same gentle justice. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.
And the same for Pastor Jan and Mark for leading us in our as assisting minister and tech leaders today, and Amari and Easton for helping with candles as well. Yes, as always, it is a community effort to lead and serve together. Um, despite what said what it said in the e-blast, we are pivoting carefully that we will have our Salem Prayer and Fellowship group this Tuesday at 10 o'clock. So Tuesday, 10 o'clock in the morning, downstairs in the lounge, come for prayer and fellowship. If the winter storm does hit really strongly, we'll make some phone calls and we'll figure it out. But we trust everyone to just lean on the side of safety if driving is a concern. But a few of us will do our we'll plan on being here at 10 a.m. Tuesday morning for our prayer and fellowship time together. And then this coming Saturday is Salem's Christmas store. So that is from 9 to 11. We're welcoming all sorts of children and families from the com community, our neighborhood and extended area as well to come in and shop for gifts. The kids will shop and then have those gifts wrapped and be, have them give those gifts to their family and friends. They can buy up to four gifts. Each gift costs a quarter. We can spot them some money if need be. Um, and those gifts are all being donated by y'all, by Emmanuel Dean Prairie, and by Trinity Lutheran in Long Lake. We continue to need a few more gifts, although I think we're going to be okay. But if you have some, please bring them still. Thursday is the deadline. That's when we're setting up and making sure we have a sense on what we need. So if you have them sitting at home, you're like, oh, I forgot today. Bring them by Thursday. We'll make sure that is just fine. If you are helping volunteer on Saturday for the actual event, please come by 8.30. Please let me or Rachel know if you haven't yet done that, just so we have a good sense of numbers. And then if you are coming to help volunteer for a setup, we are doing that beginning at 5 o'clock on Thursday. We will have some refreshments, but we're not doing full dinner for people. So we'll make sure you don't go hungry, but don't expect us to feed you a, a full meal. So um, five until we're done. So if you are, we for sure we'll be there till seven. If you can stay a little late or you have to come late and stay a little late, that's all right, we'll, we'll put you to work. But five to seven is what we're marking down on Thursday. Let us know if you're going to volunteer. But if you just show up, that's okay too. But if you know for sure, let us know today or in the coming week. 
That sounds good. Yeah, if you know for sure, double check with us, let us know to confirm. And then probably Monday, I will send an email about Thursday to, to confirm with all the people who have told us. And then um, Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll send an email about the Saturday volunteer crew as well, because we do have a good number of folks coming from the other churches to help out for Saturday. But it really is going to be an all hands on deck situation with hopefully like 100 children from the neighborhood and beyond as well. Okay. Any other announcements from the community to lift up? Well, I have one other big one. If you notice, we are decorated for Christmas, except for the pyramids are not quite Christmas. They're still Advent, but it looks pretty lovely, doesn't it? Can we get a big thank you to Laura, to Linda and Brian, and Keith, who isn't here today, but Keith also helped a ton as well. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you. It really looks great. Oh yeah, and Andy was climbing some ladders too, right? Yeah. Yes, so thank you, Andy. Yeah, it's good to our first kind of, I think it'll feel like a normal Christmas. Last year we were in person, but it didn't really feel all that normal. This year, not only will it feel normal in terms of being together, but also with some of our decorations, what a gift that is to the community. Okay, well, speaking of that, um, Christmas store details are on the insert but also um, hopefully you've seen it in our e-blast. Everyone's invited to our Christmas Eve service, which is at 5 p.m. Because we also have a Christmas Day service because it's a Sunday at our normal 1030 and a New Year's Day service at 1030 on New Year's Day. So um, Christmas Eve is at 5 p.m. Um, and the Sunday after that, a Christmas Day and the Sunday of New Year's Day, we will not have connection hour beforehand. It'll be just celebrating Christmas and singing and reading scripture together and some prayer, and just being merry and jolly as well. Any other prayer concerns as we move to the prayers of the community and people? Okay. Well, today <clears throat> we will be rejoicing in our prayers, though there is still so much need um, each petition will conclude with, Lord, with God in your mercy, please reply with, hear our prayer, and we'll have one petition to open up for any prayers of healing or concern you might have at that time, including putting it in the Zoom chat. Now, as we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. Gracious God, we rejoice in the gifts of your spirit. Equip Salem, our neighboring churches over north and across the Synod and all around the globe to magnify your love and peace in every land and embody joy in all that we do. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abundant God, we rejoice in your creation. Revive the lands that we have squandered and depleted. Help all ecosystems rest in this season of winter in this hemisphere. And in this season short on light, may we grow in our appreciation of the darkness. May we lift up the blessedness of night. May we embrace the beauty of blackness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Righteous God, we rejoice in your justice. End racism and oppression of all sorts in Minneapolis and everywhere around the globe. We thank you for sending Brittany Griner home, but deliver all who are imprisoned or persecuted near and far. Reconcile nations and peoples who are in conflict in the Middle East, in Ukraine, and in our own backyards. Remind us, like the prophet Isaiah, that your justice, Lord, will be one of gentleness. Your justice will be one for all of creation. Your justice will be one that lasts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we rejoice in your compassion. Strengthen and protect healthcare workers, first responders, rescue teams, crisis counselors, and all who risk themselves to keep others safe. Comfort any in distress because of worry, illness, loss, 
especially Marion, Sharon, Sonia, Jeanette, Marcia, Maria, Eileen, Lorraine, Melody, Beth, Martha, Darlene, everyone at Dow Towers, and all of those people we name before you now, silently in our hearts, put in the Zoom chat, or spoken aloud at this time. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abiding God, we rejoice in your company. Give us calm and patient hearts as we gather with friends and family. Keep us mindful of those for whom this season is not so happy, be it dysfunctional families or first Christmases without a loved one, or not nearly enough gifts. Console the grieving and surround them with loving support. And for those of us who are able at this time, let us sing or make all forms of music filled with joy, sharing it with our neighbors. We thank you for Mark and Janine and Salem's Choir for helping us make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Let that noise, let that song resonate all season long, near and far. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all of your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now let us join together in the call to the table as we move towards communion. and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me then again after supper he took the cup blessed it and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me for as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup we proclaim the mystery of the Lord's death until he comes again. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray our Lord's prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Today we'll be communing by coming forward via the center aisle, receiving a small piece of bread or a gluten-free wafer, and then taking either a small glass of red wine on the outside aisle or outside row or 
white grape juice from the inside and placing the empty glass in the empty tray on your way back to your seat via the outside aisle. We will sing together using the insert in your bulletin. The verses are printed, but the refrain, um, just the lyrics are, so you can follow along as best as you are able while you wait and then upon returning to your seat.
<laughs> Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, um, I want to invite our Racial Justice Committee to meet down in the lounge, I think will be a good space for us to gather together as we are able. And you are all invited to participate. It's the, just the committee itself. It's not a bigger event. We just uh, have our meeting today because then people we knew we would be here. Yeah. Um, and everyone is invited to participate in the Christmas store in some way, shape, or form. Again, a huge thank you to those of you who have already contributed. It's going to be quite the wonderful communal event. And now receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Amen. Our closing hymn 264, we will sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Verses 1, 2, and 4. 